to a troubleshooting tutorial. In this tutorial I'd like to demonstrate how to create a dynamic table inside of a form and also talk about absolute and relative object references. So we're going to build our table first. Let's go ahead and select table from our object library. We already have a basic form set up with a header and a footer. And we want uh, let's say three columns and one body row. Let's also include a footer in the table. Okay, so here we go. We have header, header row, footer row, and of course a dynamic row. And if we look at the object over here on the left in our hierarchy, we can rename the table whatever we want. I'll call it table dyn. That stands for dynamic table. And I'll hide those two rows and we'll have just row one. I want row one to be able to grow and, and have multiple instances. So I'm going to repeat row for each data item on the binding tab. I'm going to give it a minimum count of 1, a maximum count of 5, and an initial count of 1. All right, and so now let's just reposition our table. Remove some of these. Make that smaller, make that bigger. All right, this we want to be a numeric field. This we want to be a numeric field. This we want to be a numeric field. This we want to be a subform because we're going to put buttons inside it. And we want to make sure that it's positioned. All right. And so let's drop a button inside of this subform. Let's shrink it down. Let's change its name to plus only. And let's change its width and height to something minimal and now we can move that around there we can copy it we can paste it and change this one to minus we can change their name you know what I'm gonna add a column All right, so this, we'll call this one quantity. This will also be a numeric field. We're going to cut this out, and we're going to paste it here. All right. Let's center that. All right. Call that price. All right, so we have price, quantity, and subtotal. All right, and the idea here is to make a little make make a little invoice. All right, we have three numeric fields and then a, a, a subtotal at the end and a final total. All right, so now getting this to work correctly, getting this to grow and to shrink is the main purpose of what I want to show you. And um, the way in which we do that is we have to use JavaScript and open up our script editor and we need to use, we need to use these buttons as our events, the clicking of the button to grow or shrink the table. And so what I want to do is I want to make a, a relative reference. Basically, if I click this button right here, I'm inside of row one. I'm inside the first instance, we'll say. Because imagine there's four or five more rows here. I only want, when I click this button, I only want row one to add. So I'll say this dot parent, dot parent, dot instance manager, dot add instance function. All right, what am I saying here? I'm saying this, meaning this button, dot parent, meaning the cell it's in, cell one, dot parent, meaning the parent of cell one, row one. I want the instance manager of that object to add an instance. All right, so what happens? We preview the form and click the button. Adding an instance adds another row below. All right, now how do I get rid of the row? Same process, only reversed. This dot parent dot parent dot instance manager remove row or remove instance. Now here's a problem we face when we do it this way and don't put anything in the brackets there, meaning just remove the instance that you think you want to remove. And we have five. Let's say we have five instances here, which is our maximum. And I can put some numbers in here so we can watch this happen. 
All right, so now I'm going to click the row 5 minus button. No row goes away because we didn't tell it which row. So we need to tell it which row inside the brackets. So let's just say row 5. Actually, we need to make it a 4 because it's modal. All right, so it starts with 0 and goes to 1, 2, 3, and so on. So now, and I'm just numbering them so you can see this work. Now, every one of these buttons has the same code in it because they're all the same instance. So if I click this one, row 5 goes away. If I click it again, nothing happens because there's no more row 5. And that button is saying, remove row 5. It's not there. So that's where sometimes this relative referencing needs to be handled correctly. And so instead of row 4, which, of course, in this case means row 5, we need to give this a variable. We're going to call this... We want, to we want to remove row num, and we're going to declare row num as a, as, a, as a value, a relative value of the row we're in. All right? So what is this statement? This is a relative statement. This.parent.parent.index. So again, back to this button. This.parent, that's cell 1. Dot parent, that's row 1. Now the index of that row. Since we're saying it relatively, when we preview the form, all right, now when we click this button, it's going to only remove row 2. All right, 1, 3, 4, 5. When we click this button, it's only going to remove row 4. If we click Add, call this 6, call this 7, it's only removing row 7, only removing row 1. What happened here? What's the difference? Well, we made a relative reference. This.parent.parent .parent is relative. It doesn't matter which button contains this code. It's only going to reference that button's row. In other words, it's not going to get confused when we add rows. Let me just demonstrate that by doing it statically here. So if I insert a row below, look at how the names change. Row 1 bracket 0 and row 1 bracket 1. And that's how it's happening when we're running the code um, at runtime, there's these two rows called row one, so lifecycle differentiates between the two by giving them this sub number. And then when I'm clicking on the minus button, it would be ambiguous. Which row one am I talking about? Well, I don't know, and so it won't do anything. That's why I have to give it that value. And when I give it that value dynamically, meaning I'm using this relative reference, when I'm giving it that value that way, it's going to be whatever row I'm in. doesn't matter where I'm at. That code's going to work. So the beauty of relative referencing is it allows me to write robust code that can work no matter what happens to my form. If I write my code differently, then I've got to guess in advance which row am I in, which instance of this minus button am I talking about. And that's too hard for me to predict because I don't know what the end user is going to do. I don't know how many times he's going to click the plus button. All right. And of course, this is a very simple example. Just imagine how com complicated it can be if you add multiple rows, multiple tables, things like that. All right. So now let's let's calculate our field. Let's say we're going to change this to form calc. We're going to say string dot raw value equals this. I'm sorry string dot parent dot cell one I'm sorry cell two dot raw value times uh oh we have a problem here because I added that afterwards my cell names are messed up so let me rename this and let me rename this all right back to what we were doing cell 3 dot raw value. Alright, so basically what I'm saying is the subtotal equals this field by this field. Now let's give these some default values. Let's give this a default value of 0 and this a default value of 1. Alright, again I need to center that. Let's right justify that. Let's right justify that. And let's make this currency. Let's go in here and do a input pattern of currency. Alright, so now we preview our table. This is just for the sake of 
adding a adding a design. What's going on? Uh oh, I forgot to do one more thing. I forgot to say that this is not an optional field. This is a calculated field. All right, and the calculation script's the only thing that controls what that is. And I forgot to put this in the calculate event. That's where I want it, and I want it form calc. All right, so let me go over what I just did. String dot raw value is the same way in JavaScript of saying this dot raw value. This dot parent dot cell two dot raw value, meaning in subtotal row one, I only want it to add the ones to the left. I don't want it to add any other rows to it, no matter how many rows I get. So when I preview the form, now I have a value of zero. If I change that to 10, great, that works. What about if I change this row to 20 or $2? That works. If I go really big and I go three, it still works. So what I've done is I've given it a relative reference so that it only adds the cells two and three, or it only makes the, the multiplication of the cells two and three to its left. It doesn't use a different row one that's been added dynamically at runtime. All right, so now the final thing, just show you this for your own sake, your own interest, calculator read only, and script editor, and we want to do form calc, String.raw value equals string dot parent dot parent oops dot so now we're at the parent of cell three of the footer row parent table dine now we can go back work our way back in row one and we're going to put bracket star this is why why I'm using four count because this only works and cell four I'm going to wrap this whole thing inside of the sum function. I mean, I'm going to sum this entire thing. This only works in form calc. All right, let's see if it worked. $20 times 2. This keeps growing. $10 times 5. $100 times 6. And as you can see, our values keep growing. Of course, we need to change this to currency. There's some formatting things we could do. But basically, the idea is solid. Relative references are very important. Without them, you can't do these addition functions, these multiplication functions. You can't, JavaScript or form calc or this, the form itself can't know what you're talking about unless you're using relative references. So I hope, this, I hope this helps you maybe create a dynamic form, maybe uh, create a table that adds, subtracts, that does things for you. Keep submitting questions and let me know what you think of these videos. As always, IT problems are usually simple, but they're never easy. We'll see you next time.